Good afternoon. Today is Monday, March 12, 2007. This is Brian Shannon speaking from Alpha Trends Blogspot. And we're taking a look at the daily chart of the S&P 500, looking at the spiders right now. Um, just looking at this chart, taking a quick glance, it just looks like classic uh, support should become resistance right here. And because it just looks so obvious, I think, I pointed this out over the weekend too, that it just looks so obvious to so many people that this market ought to continue lower with another leg, um, that it just feels like it's not going to for some reason. The um, if you take a look, if, if we did, if we were really bearish on the market right now, and I think you have to give the benefit of the doubt to the sellers, so don't get me wrong, but I'm not sure the timing is right. I think we might get another push higher, perhaps up to this conjunction of the 20 and 50 day moving average, just to frustrate the bulls, uh, rather frustrate the, uh, the bears and, and get a little bit more bullish act action in this market too. But looking at a measured move, 146 down to about 137, we could call that nine points. Let's say it occurred from this level right here, nine points from 141 would give us a uh, target of 132. Uh, perhaps if we had that measured move occur from up here near 143, then we would be down near 134 or something like that for the next leg lower. And that would set us to test uh, that 200 day moving average point is I'm theorizing too much. If we take a look at the uh, shorter term time from the 10 minute time frame, what we see now is we have a rising 10 day moving or five day moving average. And because of that, I think that you want to be careful with your shorts in particular, if the market is able to take out this resistance uh, that's formed at about 141.35 or so. If it gets above 141.35, uh, we've got all these moving averages, the red above the blue, uh, blue about to cross up through the green there. That's not so much important, but we've got that rising five day moving average that I think we could get a little bit of a short squeeze rally that brings the market back up towards this level. So if you're getting aggressively short, I think you're early. I think you want to wait for a break, probably of at least these lows right in here. The definition of a downtrend is lower highs and lower lows. If we look at the 10 minute time frame, we have higher highs and higher lows. Now we're more in a range which way this market breaks. If it breaks past 141.35, then I think they're going to be in trouble. That is the bears. But if it breaks down below 140, I think we're going to have a nice leg lower again. So the market continues to be at this crossroads, at this juncture where nothing seems to be happening. Market's just biding time. And as the saying goes, never sell short a dull market. And we could probably extend that out a little bit further. Um, but never sell short a dull market. There's no advantage to being aggressively long in here, and there's no advantage to be aggressively short in here as well. So really not much has been changing for the market over the last week, week and a half. Classically, again, if you look at this, it looks like support broken should become resistance. We've got the 10, 20, and 50 day moving averages all heading lower. We had a lower volume rally up towards that resistance so it's classically looking like it should go lower but again what's in this is Joe Granville saying from way back in the day is that what's obvious is obviously wrong so I think we might have a little push higher before the market inevitably fails looking at the 10 minute on on, on the uh, uh, the cues here we've also got a rising five day moving average in there as well that's telling me that it doesn't make sense to be aggressively short in here if the market can take out this 43.35 level, then I think that might be the catalyst to get the push up towards that uh, area up here near 43.85. And you might look at it and say, well, so what? That's another 65 cents of upside. It's not a, not a big deal. It is if you're short. I mean, you, you, we, we want to limit our losses and we want to make sure money management wise that when it makes sense to trade aggressively on the short side, then you got to go in there with the QID, the double long and get that maximum exposure. But when you look at the QID, now we've got this declining five day moving average and it looks like this market could break below the quid that is could break below this 5490 or 5485 level uh, and, and continue lower. But if the market, if the Q's break down, then getting above 5650 or so could be the catalyst for the next leg higher that again on the daily time frame, it just looks classically time to get long this instrument that is the double inverse of the NASDAQ 100 trust. So uh, I'm going to continue to say in here until we get a little bit more clarity from the market, there's just no advantage 
to being uh, aggressively long or short. It sounds like a, a, a cop-out or whatever to, to less experienced people, but hopefully you appreciate the fact that when it's time to get aggressive, that's what you should do. But when the market is speaking uh, a, a language that is kind of confusing, which I think it is right now because we're at this bigger picture that looks so bearish and the shorter-term picture that's a little bit mixed, then we've got to just stand on the sidelines and wait for the right opportunity. When the opportunity is right, when the people who are trying to buy and sell every little move in here are frustrated and, 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 and have, have been worn out on trading, that's when the big move is gonna come. Capturing these little moves are fine if you're gonna trade off a one minute time frame and look at that, uh, the cues on in here and look at the VWAP and say, look at the nice pullback to that and then get long on strength in here. Nothing wrong with those day trades, but the bigger trade isn't set up yet so there's no advantage to getting involved until we see that evidence. The mid caps have been recovering nicely. They were up again today here a little bit, up 0.36%, uh, up 55 cents. And the, um, you know, I thought maybe on Friday that this big volume without further upside could signal distribution. We also saw that these moving averages are crisscrossing on the short term time frame. However, we have more strength in here once again. It was able to take out the resistance from Friday. Uh, more uh, yeah, Friday morning. So um, it made a higher high in here. We've got higher highs and higher lows. The buyers in the short term are in control. Anyone selling short the mid caps are getting frustrated. There's no reason to try and pick a top. Let's wait for the evidence. Let's wait for this five day moving average to flatten out. Let's wait for a lower low at the minimum before you decide to get short. Um, it's just about good money management and we all want to make big money every day, but the market doesn't provide those opportunities every day. Um, it does provide those opportunities every, every day, but finding them is the difficult part. Um, some of the stocks that I mentioned in, in pursuit of trying to find those proper ideas were, first of all, Falcon Store Software. The idea in here was to buy the stock above $10.35. That happened early on here, so you should have gotten long at 10.35. We had put our stop at $10.18. I don't see any reason to change that. We'll keep our stop at $10.18 in shares of uh, Falcon Story. We've got it long right here. Um, so continue to hold that one. Looks good. JKHY is a symbol for Jack Henry. And the idea was to buy it above 2320. That occurred early on. Uh, it looked like it might fail, but our stop was down below 23 bucks a share. So you shouldn't have sold out on that initial weakness. Um, but the stock did start to move, so I think that right now what you want to do is we won't raise it quite to break even, but we'll go two pennies below this low right here. This is 23.18. Let's just set our stop at $23.16 in JKHY. If we get stopped out, it's a four cent loss. The short sale that we had uh, looked at was to, to sell short this uh, the nine limited uh, ADR below $32.30. That occurred early on right here, so we our stop was then going to be at 32.63. Should have been stopped out with a quick loss, uh, but a small loss of uh, 33 cents. And you can see that that quick small loss was a good loss to take because the stock continued to move higher. So we won't continue to talk about that one.